Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Saglitch, aka Sag. I'm here with Mr. Lokito94. Say something for him, Lokito. Hey everybody, long time no see. Over here. <laughs> long time no see, exactly. Um, we are finally back together for uh, Switching Gears podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we are kind of still in the um, media of movies and television this week. Uh, last week we talked about uh, movies, uh, specifically uh, DC. And um, so now it's time for us to turn into the aspect from the big screen to something you can see right at home. So uh, I, I've been talking to Lokito and basically we've been talking back and forth as to what we've really been watching on TV. And... For me, personally, I watch a variety of things. I watch, I'm i from, like, dramas all the way up to cooking shows. And, well. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but I wanted to get, I wanted to see what Lokito was really into as far as TV goes. And since I know we're kind of on the same page for movies, we're on the same page for games, so I wanted to see uh, what Lokita was getting after on his TV, what he was spending time watching on his time off. So, Lokita, why, why don't you share with us a couple, couple of shows that you are either currently watching or that just went off the air and you finished the season of? Let's see. Shows that I'm watching. I am watching The Flash. The last season ended on... But yes, the, the ending of the season was very good, but it kind of left you hanging, but you love it, which is why you're going to come back for more. Arrow, let's see, they go so big, like, every time that it's something they can't go any bigger, so, but yeah, every every episode is better than less. And Key and Peele, I am currently watching Key and Peele, let's see, it's going to be their last season this season. Uh, which is disappointing, but I'm I'm hoping we won't. This won't be the last that we see of them. And yes, that is pretty much what I'm watching on television. So we got we got two superhero television shows, which I don't watch, but I've heard really really good things as far as like the seasons and uh, how they're made. Um, Key and Peele, I love Key and Peele. Uh, like, seriously, if you guys haven't seen that, go to Comedy Central right now. If you got a DVR, if you got uh, On Demand, or whatever uh, whatever set you guys have. Or even YouTube it, please. Because these guys are sketch comedy. Uh, were they from Mad TV or Saturday Night Live? I can't remember. They came from Mad TV. Mad TV, they, yeah, that's they right. They came a long way. Yes, they have. Um... Mad TV used to be my jam. Uh, used to be old school sketch comedy, but these guys. If you hey, what what's your favorite sketch out of all the seasons so far about Key and Peele? Like their ongoing sketches. The drug dealing sketch where Carve, I guess they're playing as gangsters and Car, I guess Carville, aka Peele, lost his. Um, Lost his partner, uh, and they are talking about being Care Bears and yeah. stuff. And, he, and uh, Key was really trying not to laugh. <laughs> He's like, like no, nah, nah, don't laugh. Because you know that Same. ain't funny. Yeah, that's my favorite sketch of all time. I just couldn't stop laughing, and I was tearing up so bad. Ugh. I like when he when he like just busts out loud. He's like, ah! And he's yeah, like, yeah, freaking that, that was one weird sneeze. That was one weird sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, That's my yeah. favorite schedule all the time. What about you for uh, Key and Peele? What's your favorite schedule? Um, oh god. Other than other than the football, like where they're just sitting there, this uh, East and West Bowl, where they're sitting there rambling on random names. Yeah. Uh, I would have to say the valet partners, where. Oh every, yeah, the Hathaways. The yeah, that, you talk about you talk about Annie Hathaway. Nah, nah, Bruce Willis and uh. uh <laughs> Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. You talking about Liam Neeson? Yeah, they just made. They took sketch comedy to like a whole other level. 
the way that, I don't, their, their style is just so unique. Like everybody just doing. I don't. Nobody is like them, and it's gonna be sad to see them off air. I hope they start doing movies or something, cause yeah. <laughs> yeah. If 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 they don't get a huge movie deal, I'm sure that both of them will show up in other um, other episodes, other series, just as like an add-on for the co comedic aspect. So. But yeah, we got we got Key and Peele. It's a great, great show. Uh, as far as Arrow and Flash go, I'm not not too sure about them, but I'm I'm sure they're great. I mean, you, I mean, you, have you ever, you know tried to watch the episode yet? Um, actually, my wife watched like almost the whole season of Arrow. Have you? I have. I've watched one episode, and I just kind of couldn't get into it. I was like, uh. The you Flash, must have been watching it the wrong time. Yeah, the Flash really isn't into me. I'm not into it. But the Flash? You're not into it? What? Yeah, not not a big fan of the Flash. I, I just, I don't, like, I, it's super speed. I mean, congratulations, you're super quick. Yeah, but the way he uses it, if you watch the show, it's just the ways that they use the speed to take down an enemy. It just, yeah, it's creative. I'm glad it ain't just, oh, I can run faster than you every time. Every episode, no, it's, yeah. Because every, every villain is a challenge you can't just beat, you know, by running. Well, they do beat by running fast, but the way they, he uses his speed to beat his enemy, you know. But they, also, some good acting and other stuff in the show that you care about. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I think I'll try again. Watch another episode. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Alright. But, um. For my for my aspect, since Lokito did three, I guess I'll do three. Um, mine are almost well, not really complete opposites, but on the other aspect of it, um, on Fox there's Wayward Pines. Uh, basically, uh, Matt Dillon is in it. He's the main character. He was an FBI agent sent to look after his partners who disappeared, and had a crash. And when he woke up, he was in a strange town. Uh, the story is, I, I think the last episode actually happened last week. I have to watch it, uh, this week, but I can't watch it without my wife. And she said she wasn't ready for it last night, or yesterday, so I was like, alright, I guess I'll wait. But, um, basically it's a ten-part miniseries, um, by M. Night Shyamalan. And, um, I, I've, I've seen a lot of his movies, and I've been really disappointed, like, for me, the first three quarters of the movies were great, and then the last quarter of the movie is like, what? Well, really? Like, you couldn't do anything better than this? But as far as this goes, um, when we found out what was actually happening and why they were there, my mind was blown. I was completely, completely happy with the way they did that. And uh, so, definitely need to check that out if you're into, like, like some like sci-fi weird kind of things so which uh, episode is on like how far has it gone it's i think it's all the way up to episode 10 uh oh. we were on episode 8 um a week ago about a week no i'm just kidding uh <laughs> but uh no we uh we usually <clears throat> just skip all the commercials and stuff we'll watch we'll watch it like a couple of days afterwards and uh but we we stay caught up on that um next up we have scream and it's a different how is that going it's a different adaptation of scream uh it's on uh the fourth week um uh, of the episodes it's it's different it's there's so many aspects to where they want you to think people did it and then you realize that it can't be it, it like it's not like the movie. It doesn't follow the exact pattern. Um, as far as like the acting goes, these kids they're awesome at it. And um, like instead of you know Cotton Weary thinking being framed to killing the mom or whatever, the mom was originally the. Um, person of interest that the killer wanted to get but that was 20 years ago 
And now they're thinking that, like, someone who, or he's the guy's back to kill everyone or whatever. And it's just, it's a really good show. I don't think that it's going to follow the same pattern as the movie where the spoiler alert, and if you haven't seen Scream yet, you guys, uh, you guys are just, oh well. Um, it's the boyfriend and the best friend. So I don't think that that's going to happen in this episode, in this series. Uh, and also, they have a different mask. I don't know if you've seen it. It's more oh, like... It's kind of kind of different. Yeah. I, I, I like that they incorporated something different, but I think that they should incorporate the different part in the storyline and kept the original, like, mask. Just because it's... <clears throat> it's the... It's the tag of the franchise, basically. Like... That, that's the one thing that was constant throughout the movies. What the what? <laughs> but, uh, that's the second one. That's on MTV. If you guys uh, haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Uh, last but not least, um, oh man, what was I going with? I completely had a brain fart. Um, did it have to do with zombies? Did it? I don't know. Says something about cooking shows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was basically. Dang. Well, we got talking about Ken Pill, so. Oh, um. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with, uh. Actually, it's on the same station of Comedy Central, uh. Uh. It's different area. Uh, different period or something like that. And it's basically the, um. It's taking a fictional look at the historical um, backstory of a family that owns a a very wealthy family in America that owns a um, mansion, and they all live under the mansion. The dad, uh, the two daughters, the wife, and the servants have their own servants' quarters, and uh, it's a really funny, funny quip, like witty show um if you guys haven't checked it out definitely look at it because it's like these girls they're so think of it nowadays where you're like oh my god let me take a selfie but like back in historical times where she's got a poodle that looks like yeah god i can't even like describe how ugly this thing is but um the servants have to take care of it uh the husbands of the daughters are secretly gay and no one knows it and they asked them because they hated their husbands they asked them to run away and give them two million dollars to live on and uh so that they can marry wealthy and uh um the guy from reno 911 the sheriff he uh he actually played a suitor in one of the episodes and they like told him that's when they told him to leave and the sister, the ugly sister, invited over Helen Keller. And so... Oh, that's deep. That's yeah, it, was, it got it got hilarious because Helen Keller was still in all the spotlight and they got in the fights. And dude, it was just, it was unbelievable. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think it's called uh, Another Period or something like that. So, definitely, definitely check it out. Um, Comedy Central's got some good shows on it. But uh, we'll transfer into something different, and this is actually the opposite of what we've been talking about. Show one or two shows that we hate and we cannot stand, and uh, I'll let Lokito go first. <laughs> so. Okay. Um. So I don't know how this show is still on, but yes, yeah, it's a miracle. Uh, it's called a little show called Agents of Shield. So the first episode, oh my, I was just so I was pulling my hair out at like 15 at the 15 minute mark. I just it felt like a show for idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and and so yeah, at, so two years later, here I am. I try to watch a second episode, and nope. And then I hear, you know, YouTubers and, you know, folks going, 
it, it, it gets really good towards the last couple seasons, and I'm like, really? So I try to watch the third episode, and I'm like, ugh, that means I got to watch this season in order to get to that season. Yeah, and now, I, I guess it's getting really good toward, because I guess one of the characters, uh, Chloe Bennett's character is getting to, you know, a movie called Inhumans. It, but, no, I... Just can't stand that show, but if it's really that good, I guess I gotta watch one episode every couple months. You know, that's all I can tolerate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, um, should I name another show that I don't like that's upcoming, or you want to go? No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, another show that's upcoming that I already know that I will not like: Supergirl. That's one of my favorite superheroes. You know, of all time, she's in my top ten, and I think she's number ten actually. But yeah, the way their their take on Supergirl is so I don't the demographic they're going for. Okay, you know, you want as many people to watch the show as possible, but nah. If if you ever seen the Devil Wears Prada, you yeah, you'll get this. You'll kind of get a idea of what they're going with. You know, this. Teenage girly, uh, okay. Because I I read comic books, right? And Supergirl is she's a girl, but she's not what you see right there in that TV show. Like, uh, yeah, the stories I read, yeah, she came from Krypton, but not. And she became super. And she was already Supergirl, because you know that outfit that they're using right now is just terrible. Like, ugh, it's. Uh, I don't know why they went retro, but yeah, I can tell I'm not, I'm going to watch the first episode, of course, but I can tell I am not going to be pleased. Um, any shows that you hate, Zach, that is on? I, well, speaking of Supergirl, I actually saw another, uh, another preview in the theater when we went to the movies this past, uh, week or two ago, and, um, uh, gotta say, it just wasn't, like, wasn't pulling anything. Like, it wasn't pulling any interest in this. Um, but, I just, again, I'm not huge into the superheroes, but the fact that, number one, actually, you are so big into the superhero aspect, and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Supergirl just does not, like, it just basically turns you off the superheroes, is surprising to me. And oh, yeah. So that's... <laughs> If you read the comics, yeah, <clears throat> the comics are actually, I think, would be good for a demographic that, like, a lot of people will watch it, but nope, they want to go with the, you know, modern pop culture take on it. Yeah, so, that's surprising. So, for me, and don't, no one, everybody has their own opinion. Uh, yeah, just my opinion, just my opinion. Yeah, Lokito uh, was worried that I was going to bring a lot of heat towards this, and I'm going to try to be as nice as possible with it. Um, for me, the one show that's still on that I cannot stand and that I hate is Team Mom. And it's only... Well, there's a couple reasons why. Number one, my wife watches it. I, I, I can't... Like, no, I can't. I can't stand it being on, and she, like blatantly watches it and uh but i don't feel like these girls are getting paid to basically like i i, don't, I wouldn't really call it a story i mean they're just getting paid to be dramatic and like just talk about their woes throughout their lives and how bad this decision was and if you guys think about it, we're really supporting a bad decision that they made. And there, some people are going to be like, oh, well, they can't help it. No, they could help it. They just chose not to help it. And the fact is that I don't feel that we should be supporting people uh, that can't get their lives together when there's so many different, there's so many different other needs that people have in this world where we should focus more on but 
it's just the fact that instead of looking out towards your your immediate area and maybe help out them you got you guys are sitting in front of a TV watching these girls complain about their lives where they have a chance to do something with it they're getting money just sitting there gabbing back and forth and I get that no life is easy life is hard life is hard oh, yeah. but the fact is that we support them by just watching them sit there and talk to their friends talk to their exes talk to their kids and I kind of feel like no offense but I kind of feel that the the moms and the parents are kind of um, what's the word I'm using like they're using their kids for pu publicity like that's kind of sad yeah, I mean, what's going to happen when these kids grow up and say, hey, you know, by the way, like, you're on Team Mom, like, this is, and they can go back and watch, like, how sad their parents were that they're pregnant, you know, that, it's recorded on national television that this is what happens, so that in itself can be bad, the fact that they're exploiting the kids to get money it said and uh, the one the biggest one I can't stand out of all the moms out of the original moms is Farah. I cannot stand that girl like it seems to me that every episode she's gonna cry about something and it's like the stupidest things that she cries about so that's they, show, they ever show any teen moms that actually have like the hardest time, like no support from their parents or no, no, no. like not, not really no because it seems that now like they have that supportive role and I, I get why they're doing it this way because they want to show that families can come together and be together and whatnot and have a good story, but at the same time, like you said, like you just said, there's people out there that have no support, like at all. And these are the people that they should be help helping. So that is one show that I cannot stand, and that's the reason why I can't stand it. So it's not that just oh they they got pregnant when they were teens, like uh no, it's the exploitation of the kids and uh, the other things that we can do to help like other people who probably are more deserving. So that's my little rant about Team Mom. <laughs> okay, y'all right. Any other shows? Or uh, you... that, I'm just going to leave it at that right now, to be honest with you. That's that's the one show I cannot stand. So. But, um. Uh, but next up, we'll get in a little bit happier thoughts. A little bit. <laughs> we'll go to upcoming shows. Shows that either haven't came out yet, or are about to come out for another season, or just like anything we're excited for that we haven't really talked about and uh, I'll, I'll switch it up I'll continue the flow um, so since I was so negative I'm gonna be super positive right now and uh, as we all know I am a huge 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 horror fan huge zombie fan and uh, uh, Rob, Kirk Rob Kirkman is coming out with another aspect of The Walking Dead but this time since The Walking Dead, to me, The Walking Dead's a little bit of action, uh, a little bit of a drama now, uh, and I don't mind because I do like to see the aspect as to what the people will do in this kind of uh, environment. But this is actually the kind of like the aspect of what started uh, the zombie apocalypse and The Walking Dead. Uh, really? Yes. Uh, the entire time that uh, Rick was in uh, the hospital looking for Carl, but uh, Carl, Carl, <laughs> but uh, Carl. Carl's this this is basically the time that uh, we found it to the time we um, to the aspect of when Rick wakes up. Uh, the setting is in Los Angeles. Uh, the premise is. I believe two high school teachers um, and their family are trying to escape the um, city when the when the virus uh, begins to take on the aspect of everybody becoming a zombie. Uh, it's going to focus on 
uh, the doctor is trying to prevent it maybe maybe give a little insight as to how it started with uh, the doctors as well so uh, I'm excited to see it's gonna be more action-packed than The Walking Dead like it's gonna be like we gotta get out of the city we gotta do this 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 and like the preview itself uh, has the two, it shows the two teachers it shows um, the doctors in a hazmat suit with uh, different vials of uh, liquids um, I guess towards the uh, crank up of the uh, trailer the kid the um, teenage kid is running through the streets trying to get away from whatever and he crosses the street and gets hit by a car gets up and just keeps running because he's terrified of what's behind him um, and at the very end the very end there's like um, a overpass uh, with uh, with a uh, the thing underneath like the little walkway underneath the overpass of a non-populated area of like four or five people walking together but it's like they're zombies so like you can see them coming and it's just like uh, like it, it's, it's awesome to see like the f beginning aspect of what they because The Walking Dead didn't really didn't really talk about how it began doesn't really talk about what it is and this might this might give us answers as to the people asking how did this start so definitely excited about that um, when is it you know when it airs or uh it's, it's it says it said summertime. I think it got pushed back a little bit. It's going to be coming in August. Um, either Not, late, far. Not far. Yeah, late August or early September. But if they push it back too far, it's going to be running the same time as The Walking Dead. So I kind of I thought that they would do it as this is the summertime. This is the summer series. This is what we want to happen. But, you know... Things happen, things get pushed back, but I was really hoping for my, like, my little, nice little break in between both. This is going to pick up where, um, right in the middle while we're getting our little, um, itch for The Walking Dead. And then, once this is done, The Walking Dead begins. So, who knows how they'll do it. Um, well, I'm looking forward to The Walking Dead. Even though I'm not caught up, I got five more episodes to get to, but I'm pretty sure it'll be nothing. Yeah. Yeah. What well, I mean, once you start binge watching things, it is tough to get like I'll sit there for five hours and watch something and be like, Wait, what was I doing? Yeah. <laughs> like it <laughs> But um my second one would be another zombie well, kinda zombie aspect. Uh more like any realm of horror like Witch, zombie, you know, whatever. And it's called Ash vs. The Walking Dead. Or, sorry, not The Walking Dead. Ash vs. The Evil Dead. My apologies. And this is coming on stars. And if you guys... Everybody knows about The Evil Dead. Um, a lot of people, a lot of newer people uh, know about the remake that they did. And this actually follows the original Evil Dead. And if you guys haven't seen the original one with uh, oh god Bruce uh, he was on Burn Notice um, he was the older guy on Burn Notice uh, I cannot for the life of me remember his name like right now but uh, we follow his character and uh, he's he's older he's still working at the uh, the grocery store that he originally worked out when he got sucked into the time pro time portal and um it's just it, it, it's gonna be great to see because um when he made the movies he was a fit he was fit he was like in shape and now that he's older he's gotten bigger and that he's he's putting on like it shows in the series in the uh, trailer that he's putting on like a corset to fit everything and uh once everything goes to crap again, he's got to get out his boomstick, uh, which is his shotgun, and uh, 
he still has his he has his fake hand because it was shot it was um, cut off in the movie, but he still has the chainsaw mount that he hooks up to on his hand, and I can't wait to see what they do with it. Um, Sounds crazy. Oh, dude! If you get just when you get a chance after this is done, look up the trailer for Ash vs. the Evil Dead. It's hilarious. So, I want to see that. And that's the two biggest shows that I have coming forward that I'm looking forward to. But what about you, Loki? I'm sure you got something a little different for me here. Let's see. Of course, there are superhero shows. Um, one being, you know, Teen Titans, or the show's going to be called Titans. That is... I, they haven't show really anything for, you know, just maybe a little casting, but that's it. But, yeah, the fact that Teen Titans are getting uh, a TV show adaption, you know, that's pretty big for me. Yeah, I don't know. We really don't know too much about it. You know, but, yeah, I'm excited for the roster. I think Dick Grayson's going to be in there. They said Raven's going to be in there. No, no sign of Beast Boy, which is kind of disappointing because that's... That's your character that's gonna make you like the TV show even more, but yeah, that was supposed to supposedly be coming out next year, but yeah, I just I guess I had to wait and see, you know, to get more and more gummy shows. Uh, yeah, I think that might be it. Besides, um, this go for the. Yeah, yeah. Besides Empire, I don't know if you guys heard of a little show called Empire. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That, hopefully, it airs next year. It's too good not to. But yeah, those are my two shows. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking my, forward to. My wife got me into Empire, and uh, at first I was like, ah, oh, no, no. And then I was like, yeah, all right, all right. Okay, it's deep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and it, it is coming out for a new season. Uh. Uh, Timberland is being brought on as the producer for the music um, this season, and it'll be good. I'm I'm looking forward to see. Did you see the uh, the finale where he was like? He, oh yeah, I saw it. Okay, well, no spoilers, but I'm looking to see what she did. What she did with that pillow, what she actually did. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean. Um, Basically, TV is, um, has become a lot of things that, um, it used to be a bigger aspect in the world at home, um, uh, but with YouTube, Netflix, and stuff like that, it's kind of been not really looked away at, but it's just not as big as, like, when we were kids, because I remember sitting down, and you had to sit down to watch a certain show on a certain night because there was no... Because that might be the only time you only, you know, that might be your only chance to see that show. Yeah, there, there was no recording process when uh, we were younger. You guys don't know the struggles. The, yeah. Or you new, you new guy, you know, you uh, 2000 kids. The millennials. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but what we have next time, yeah. I uh, just wanted to say that uh, next time we're definitely going to get back into the gaming. Gamescom is next week, so be looking out for that, guys. Yes, sir. There's a lot of things coming out, and uh, Gamescom's in Germany, I believe. Um, I think so. Yeah. Um, going, to, going to be looking more into the German, the German community, so uh, for the game. Yeah. So let's be looking out. But uh, do we have anything else? I think that's going to be wrapped up. Uh, thank you guys for watching. This is, uh, again, TV aspect for uh, upcoming shows and shows we like. So, uh, that being said, we have uh, rambled on enough about what exactly we look forward to, what we like, and what we don't like. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Also, check in the description below for the uh, playlist for Switching Gears podcast. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to sign out. Lokito, hit him with something. Uh, adios. Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> Peace, guys.